with the Summer Olympics coming to London at the end of this week. This episode of Home Office Lifestyle is talking about the Olympic spirit and how we can bring some of it into our home office lifestyle on a day-to-day basis. So watch. Welcome to episode 85 of Home Office Lifestyle. Is it really our 85th episode? Yeah, 85. How Crazy. exciting. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Ovali, where we empower your home office lifestyle through web hosting, cloud services, and domain names. Visit ovali.com to buy your domain name today. And by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash Ovali. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Woo! Yes, we'll be talking about <laughs> books tonight, so that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. Hello, I'm Kathy. And I'm Jen. And like we were saying before the show began, that tonight's episode is all about the Olympic spirit. It's going to be fun. Uh, you know, I thought we should dress up for this episode. I know, I thought of that about the time we were dressing up Yeah, for I this. was. Well, I was looking for like a tennis band or something <laughs> like that. But I mean, in my house, we dirt bike, we, we bike, and helmet. we skateboard, and there's no such thing as like sweatbands. Yeah. A well, helmet? Well, that is not Olympic sport. Actually, I actually did a lot of research about the Olympics today. Oh, really? But yeah. I do have some leftover Jane Fonda headbands I could have worn. Oh, well, you should have. Could, you should go yeah. get them right now. No, I'd have to search for them. They're oh. buried. Lame. Yeah. All right. So anyway, tonight's episode, or whenever you're watching this, morning, afternoon, this That's episode true. of Home Office Lifestyle is all about the Olympics. And we're going to be talking about seven, um, like, pillars Should we say pillars? Seven pillars pillars of Olympic spirit, of the Olympic spirit. I like it. As put together by mom. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for mentioning that. Your pillars might be a little bit different. (laughs) My pillars might be a little different. But these are seven pillars that she's observed (laughs) doing her research over the last week. Um, She actually has a fun story about that. I do? Yeah. (laughs) Well, we we decided to do the Olympics because the Olympics are this week. Well, lo and behold, everybody's doing one. Yeah. And so last night, the producer... I know. (laughs) The producer and I turned on um, the OWN channel, and we watched uh, how many... I don't remember how many athletes for so many hours. We only watched it for an hour. We have a picture of it. You can see how many athletes there were. Uh, They were were so inspiring, and she did a good job. It's real short interviews for all of them. But I grew up with most of these people, so it was a lot of fun to listen to their little tips. And Sean Johnson, you know, with Dancing with the Stars, just a cutie. Yeah, so Mom's Seven Pillars, the at what she listened to last night and just we, helped in rehearsing some of the me. stories yes. definitely confirmed her pillars. <laughs> so she's going to be talking about a little bit of the stories in between there. Then we're going to break yes, for books that were authored by athletes and a lot of them you can get on audible which is fantastic because that means you get a free book when you're listening to this all you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash overlay and you get the book for free the second after you're done watching this podcast pretty cool and then we're going to finish it up with a little tip pointer from the secret and uh, which is really fun you're going to want to stay for that (laughs) and then my favorite. <laughs> that a list, you research. A list of movies <laughs> that are Summer are. Olympics inspired that will mo- motivate you in your business. Because I think if you are going to sit down and spend the time to watch a movie, it better inspire, motivate you, or make you happy. So that's what we're going to finish we're up. We're talking with. about motivation. So let's go ahead and get started and talk yes. about some of the things. So, I mean, uh, this morning I s- got to pinning um, on our Pinterest board some little pieces the Olympics, I feel like, is all about just, it's in, in, inspiring, motivating, it's like tearjerker type of stories. You see athletes, who was the one that had the broken ankle, and then she went and she vaulted and did all that crazy stuff with the n- gymnastics, so it's tons of stories like I this. I can't remember. And, um, so yeah, I was pinning some different pieces, and I thought a lot of it applied to 
our business world. I got started just doing silly little things like the Olympic Games to advertise that we were talking about this well, tonight. Well, it, it does go in w- but, nicely um, with small businesses. Yeah, but so. going through some of the things like practice and uh, persistence and the, nice the mindset behind athleticism. Live really, fitter. It really applies to building a business, though. And um, my favorite one is that if you look on our desktop right now, you can see on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Cloud, I shared one of the Pinterest pins. And it never gets easier. You just get better, which I thought was a great one because I think, you know, that applies, in, that applies in running or whatever athletic mm-hmm. thing that you're doing. But it also applies in just starting your business yes. you know it's hard and it never gets easier it just you get more used to it because you're persistent you practice and you practice excellence and that's why we're doing this show yeah it, it's gonna be fun so let's okay. go ahead and get started with our seven pillars of pillars. athleticism pillars olympic awesomeness <laughs> okay start start so the, the first one is competitive you need to be competitive That's what Olympic cool kids do. They're all competitive. So I can't just say one specific person, but I am going to say (laughs) one tonight. I mean, because face it, every single athlete has to be competitive. But we're going to highlight, uh, let's see, Mary Mary Lou Renton, who I loved when she started out too. And of course, everybody at that time had her hair cut and she was the first one on the Wheaties box that was a woman. Uh, She's very inspirational. And uh, hopefully we have a picture of her. There she is, she's talking to Oprah. Oprah. She was really cute because the quote I'm gonna give you tonight is that the competitiveness in her, it never goes away. She's retired, she's doing speaking, and things like that but uh, she said going up the stairs with her family she always has to be first at the top of the stairs I mean it's all it's in her to always be competitive even with her family members so we'll we'll have all the links that mom's talking about because we're going to be talking about a lot of links resources tips all that fun stuff and it's going to be over at ovali.tv if you're watching this on itunes or anywhere else look for ovali.tv and find episode 85 and uh the competitive i mean i'm competitive i've always been that way yeah you are competitive (laughs) it helps it's good so the second point that we're talking about in in embodying the olympic spirit is to hate to lose well <laughs> i can't remember which one was my um, you're talking about mary lou uh mary lou i want to say mary lou henner who's mary lou henner she's the taxi the lady and okay. she's <laughs> the one with the brain thing that yeah goes on, really interesting cool. that should yeah. be another that would be a good topic at. but anyway um another mary lou what was that one again i think it, you were talking to me about like the same idea that she doesn't want to lose it just goes into your competitive yeah, but nature there was a story it's on oprah's um Trace, do you remember what it was? The the part where she never wanted to lose. Well, anyways, she goes into the Olympics and uh, she gets two tens right in a row, too. It's like she has, and we talk about the drive and I talk about somebody else, but it shows on Oprah. And if you go and you Google her, the big thing of her was doing the tens, the two. She just went for it each time. Um, and uh, I don't know the example. I can't remember exactly on that <laughs> but one. But it sounds it. good. So number three, we're talking about being driven. And you had a Mark Spitz. Oh, see, I was just watching that twice tonight. Because for one thing, I'm a huge fan of Mark Spitz. And he was, uh, and he's 60. It's like, whoa, where did the time go? But he was the one that went into all of that um what is it the when they were kidnapped or you know taken hostage uh, it was during that time and he actually won the most medals that any athlete has won at the olympics and actually uh michael phelps is going to try and um kick his butt this kick year kick his butt yeah kick is that his a technical butt. term <laughs> <laughs> anyways mark spitz i love what he said he says um What it takes is mystery, wonder, and innocence of never having that, you know, gone to the podium and been number one. And he said, I didn't rely on destiny for that. I made things happen. I practiced every day. I got in the pool. In fact, all those pool guys, you really hear that. I mean, they all have pools in their backyard, too. That doesn't. um, It helps. uh, Yeah, that helps a lot. But 
those guys just jump in the pool every single day, no matter what they're doing, and just get to where they need to be to get on that podium. So all of these people have all of these pillars, but the you know I have to remember what each example. I think was. those that's good as far as driven goes because I'm sure there's days where they're like I don't really feel like I know what if it's like snowing outside he's gonna go well I guess he can well, drive. Well, not even snow. What if you're tired yeah. or you're just like <laughs> you, you want to watch something on TV? Yeah. <laughs> so. I think that's a good thing to think about is that even, you know, this is their job is to swim and they love it. Yeah. Our job is to build businesses out of our home. So and, every day you, know, you all have your passion. But there are days that are just like Help. not yeah. so much fun right now. Yeah. Um, so anyway, number four, the fourth one before we go into talking about some books is being passionate. And that goes into drive. You were saying. Yeah, they were all passionate. Um, Sean Johnson, uh, who I think we have a couple um things about her but she was passionate wait we're doing passionate yeah <laughs> <laughs> passionate is uh her little story that's so cute and she has a book and we're going to talk about her book too she's only like 20 now i know i'm excited to read her book actually yeah it was, it was she's very inspiring but she said she started gymnastics when she was three years old and she just absolutely loved being a gymnast uh, throughout her life that was the passion that she never wanted to stop could you met I mean we saw that commercial did you see it when she was yeah, like, like going across all the counters it's like yeah that's her so having that foundation of passion, yeah, the passion loving what you do is they important. all have to love it they all have to run they all have to swim otherwise I mean it's just like us we all have to love our businesses and what we do yeah so. And I've been reading Bethany Frankel's book, and she talks a lot about being happy in her last little uh, rule or coming from a place of yes is the book. And uh, she said that if happiness was something easy, then we would all be happy. You have to work to being happy. And yeah, part of that, said is, something like that is loving too. what you do yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. And I thought that was a great thing to remember, especially when you're talking about passion and, you know, putting your entire life into something. Um, so let's go ahead and break and talk about books since we're talking about Bethany Frankel. You know, one thing, though, um, I want to talk to before or talk about is Spark and Hustle. I know some oh, of yeah, you totally are watching <laughs> the video tonight and or today or whenever you watch it. Um, I just want to say I enjoyed Spark and Hustle. If you are and there's still halfway, right? I think or no. How there's many? Six more they? cities left. Six more cities left. So check out SparkandHustle.com. It really was a fun day of a lot of entrepreneurs just starting or thinking about starting. Um, some people had already just. Um, wanted to hear all about the speakers we had some yeah. good speakers it was a great a uh, great conference for people who are just starting off so if you're just starting off it's a great way to make connections yeah. and learn a few things mom spoke yeah but i was going to say one more tori johnson was uh so fun she was mm -hmm. she was hilarious actually yeah she made mom feel comfortable but she spoke <laughs> and it, this goes back to our getting out of your comfort zone uh, episode, so make sure you check out that one. That was like episode 83 or 82 or something like that. And it was all about um, pushing yourself to grow. And so mom did that exact that was my thing first because she time. hates public speaking. Yeah. 150 women, and that was my first time. Isn't like public speaking like the number one thing people are afraid of yeah. apart from like dying? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, so mom it. did it, and um, she did a great job. And I was scared to death when she started talking fast. You talk fast, so I'm getting yeah, used to this. Um, but but she really talked fast. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So right. um, go to that episode. And then we have a vlog about it, too. So I'll include those <laughs> links. We have so much We're on it. We have so many links on this yes. episode. So make sure you go to ovalite.tv to grab all of them. Also, really fast before we go into books, since we're kind of taking a little break here, is that if you watch a Home Office Lifestyle Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 east, or 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, uh, 10 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. I'm getting messed up from Young Female Entrepreneurs. 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern at overlay.tv slash live. We are on the chat right now. If you have a favorite athlete, mom still has three more points to go through. And we have a list of books and a few other oh, things. Yeah. Make sure that you chat in and let us know what your thoughts are because you might understand these like memories that mom has about have these so athletes many. where I don't necessarily I have the memories. Yeah. I see them on, you know, like recaps, but I wasn't there watching it live. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and look at some books. Books are fun. <laughs> books. We like so books. Th these are a compilation of this books that mom you. put together um, of athletes. 
So the first one up, and this is an Audible book. So you guys could go to audibletrial.com slash Ovaline and grab it for free right after you're done watching this. <laughs> I like the, I like the um, title, In the Water They Can't See You Cry. Is she, that a happy title or is that a sad yeah, title? Yeah, actually, she's competing. Well, they all give the good, the bad, and the ugly, which I like about. Amanda uh, Beard. Yeah. yeah. But she's competing in uh, the games this weekend, so let's cheer her on. Now, I think her name's Dara Torres. How do you not love I this love lady? I love that title. Yes. Uh, age is just a number. Well, she, I think she's 41. She retired from swimming. But the one story I loved, I read all, see, I read all about her because she's kind of like my age, way younger though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she gave this story. That she's one of the oldest ones competing. And uh, the day of the, the race that she was, it was like her number one race she had to win. She went down early before anybody got up. She wanted, she made no sounds because she didn't want a competition waking up. So she can get kind of a rhythm in the water. But she would also describe that uh, a lot of the athletes, because they're young, they wear the um, backpacks and they put all their gear. There's a ton of gear you have to take to the swimming pool. Well, she takes her granny, um, you know, the flight kind of the suitcase with the wheels because it, she didn't want to hurt her shoulders for the swim that day Interesting. yes but she just gives little things like that i i would say i'm gonna read this one as soon as i can it's fun this one's very inspire inspiring because it's a bunch of them a bunch of quotes a bunch of them a bunch of women <laughs> a bunch of women telling their stories and it looked really good so yeah. I, I recommend that one. And then her, Jackie Joyner Kersey, who doesn't love her? Uh, she, on her um, Amazon page, there was just a ton of great um, people telling how much they love that book. So I recommend that book too. Oh, and then of course, who doesn't love Michael Phelps? Available on Audible. No <laughs> Limits. And then Sean Johnson. I want to read that one. I think it's just because it's pink on the cover, which is unfortunate. Sad for me to say. I'm sure it's a great book, but it just the cover looks really cute. Well, let me tell you, she had to retire this year. What? Uh, yeah, she's not. Um, she's not going to do anything. But it's because of her injury. And it tells a little bit of this. Um, people were hoping for more. Oh, that's so um, sad to be 20 years old and by yeah, you're her done skiing doing accident. what you love. She's had a hard time. It's crazy. She'll have to write another book because she's had a hard time coming to grips with being 20 and being retired from what she loves to do. So, And then... Um, <laughs> Tony Volpentes. I just, that's from our virtual road yeah. trip. Yeah. So he was our Arizona uh, interview and Very he's an Olympic athlete. He's the fastest man in the world. Can and you imagine? he was born with no limbs. He's got a crazy story. And he just wrote this book and he was on virtual road trip with Carissa. And he was explaining about the process and writing the book and what that took. And then also about his, his, quest to becoming a champion and how to never give up and how to push yourself and how to never so let a disability affect you. So we will great, have the link to that. It was a great too. interview. Yes. Um, so those were just some books that you can check out and make sure that of course you go to ovalay.tv and find out more about our virtual road trip. But let's go ahead and finish up with the last three. So we just talked about four points of the Olympic spirit and how to bring that into your home based business with being competitive, hating to lose, being driven and being passionate. Now the fifth one is being confident. Well, and Carl Lewis, uh, I watched all of, you know, his competitions too, but he was very arrogant. Nobody, none of the news people really liked him because he would always, you know, just kind of, he didn't really care what he said. He was focused, very focused. And you have something to say about that. Well, mom was just pulling up this article and saying that you have to be confident in order to be well, successful. He was saying it to Oprah. You know, you have to you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. But that interview, it's actually a really interesting yeah, one because he came forward and said my confidence wasn't um to sell stuff or to be, you know, he wasn't he didn't care what the media thought about him or what even really what his fans thought. He was there for a different purpose than to just, you know, please people or entertain people. He was there to hold up um, his family's name, basically, and his purpose was to that. fight for things that he believed in. That's what his parents did. And he continued to do that. 
So his confidence was in his voice and speaking out for what he believed in, not necessarily thinking about what any endorsements a lot of would them, um, yeah, they're not be taken there. away because of that. Right. Okay. So anyway, um, so being confident is a great one. That's definitely something athletes uh, talk about all the time. Um, you have a lot of very uh, confident female athletes that we've seen on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> it's always been funny to watch them. I know Marceline. Um, Mar- wait, what's the tennis star? Sh- Mar- t- wait, what's her? I know who you're talking yeah, about, but let's March go on to double, number six. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she was really good, and she was 60. Really? Yeah, she was 60. Yeah, thank you, Martina wow. never That's crazy. Yes. She does not look 60. Okay. So number six is being disciplined. And this is like a no-brainer one, but come on, seriously. I, that's something that us, we in our home office and sitting behind our desk could really – you know, take into heart and make sure that we're disciplined not only, you know, in staying healthy like the athletes, but also staying disciplined in daily routines and making sure that we do the things that make us money and that well, kind of thing. Well, I was going to say that Bart Connor, who was a gymnast, um, he's in the Oprah thing too. I liked what he said. It's not really um, saying that he's disciplined, but I think it has to do with your focus and your determination. And um, because... That is an elite club, he was saying, these athlete, athletes, because there's no, like, oh, my dad gave me this job, or uh, this person recommended me. You honestly have to, you know, you have to do the job right in front of everybody to get that to the gold medals. So I liked what he had to say. But you Focus were saying to me, I don't know if this is the same thing, but I took notes when we were talking about it. You said something about that there's 4,000 plus athletes and only a couple of them actually get to be winners. Yeah. And so you have to be doing something completely different and a whole crazy amount better than all of the other athletes to keep, take those two little spots. Yes. Um, so I thought that was interesting little piece. And I, I've heard that a lot about millionaires that, you know, they're 10 percent and we're the 90 percent. <laughs> and those 10 percent of people are doing something completely different than the other 90 percent. So you have to to be strive to be better to be disciplined to be passionate to hate to lose to be competitive all the things that we're talking about tonight i think applies in business well, when are you going to talk about your experience so well the last okay. one that we're talking about is right. being obsessive and for this point you're talking about jackie joiner kersey uh, oh yes uh she was interviewed by oprah and she was um the part that struck me is that of course she's this major athlete and has won many medals but she told Oprah that she was so disciplined, almost crazy, because she didn't do any holidays with her family, and she hardly did any birthdays. She was so focused, and we called her obsessive. <laughs> but Well, that's, they talk about that in business, too. I was just watching um, David, the Garland guy, and the Rise to the Top, and I've watched a couple of videos of his last night when I was uploading my own Young Female Entrepreneurs podcast. Make sure that you check that out on iTunes. Um <laughs> <laughs> and his guests were saying, they mentioned a p- obsessive a couple times about their business. And I think that applies, you know, an athlete. You want to be an athlete since you're three years old. You want to win Most that gold medal. Did. And that's all you think about. That's all you do. And so it's, it's, I think it's obsessive. Yeah, it said in her book, um, Sean Johnson's book, that she didn't think she'd be in the Olympics at the beginning. Uh, well, of course not. She's only three. But it came later. And it says later in life, what, 18? 17. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 15. So anyway, those are the seven points uh, that we wanted to talk about, about being an Olympic, um, bringing, being an Olympic <laughs> business owner in your home based <laughs> business. That's what we are. Uh, so we talked about being competitive, hating to lose, being driven, being passionate, being well, confident, hello, I disciplined, want you to tell and obsessive. The story. Well, so the next part that we're talking okay. about is the secret. And a lot of you have read this book and I thought this book, piece applied specifically it's available on audible and that is how i read it um, I love a couple that. times i read yeah, it every I need once to read in a while again. when you just need a little boost yeah, i'll put I on the secret boost. just something positive and happy to think about and there's this part where a doctor talks about how he hooks up olympic athletes to a machine onto so his muscles and he says run the race in your head and he's they've seen that the muscles run the race even though you're not physically running the race your mind tells your muscles that you are. And so he sees the same kind of exertion that would, it mimics the race. So if I said in bed, stomach muscles work harder, would they? No, I think that what the point that they're making though is that 
your mindset plays so much into what your your actual performance is. And I think that's so mm. true because I had a, I had a personal experience yes. with this. Um, so I coached a drill team when I got out of high school or no, got out of college, college. <laughs> and uh, when I was just starting with Ovalite and they became state champions and I wrote a little blog post about it on the Cloud Maven and it was You'll 10 link. points to being a champion and I'll make sure that I link to this because those are the, th the qualities that I saw that those girls, because the school had never won on the drill team, they had never won a state championship, those girls not only, um, they wanted to be a superior team, they took away, t took superior, but they were like literally state champions too they won they beat out everyone and it was crazy and one of the things that i would always have them do before competitions was and this is something i did back when i was dancing in high school and in college too is you that you run you run yes, through the performance before you go on the field and you do that after every practice you did that like in in the car while you're brushing your teeth you run you ran through it in your mind coming out with the best possible conclusion and i really feel like that sets you apart as a competitor when you when you visualize it and you put forward you know the best possible and conclusion. you would do it in practices and yeah. before the competition yeah. and all that yeah so i think that's a fantastic tip well for and you. they won they won big time yeah they, they won, won big everything. time and you know they didn't win every time but they w they won when it was important very so um with that in mind Wait, we're gonna we have a picture of them? We should have had... Well, I had a little blog post about it, but, you know, that's kind of like, okay. I'm not allowed to share... Oh, the kids, so, Right? Yeah. Like, privacy probably stuff? Not. So, that's probably um, a good idea. So, anyway, we're going to go ahead and talk about a list of movies to end everything and then just a fun, like, high point. <laughs> and it was funny because we were... This is just something that we've done. If you've watched Home Office Lifestyle in the past when it was called Soho Insights, we put together lists of movies and fun things, like music that inspire you, motivate Always. you in your home base. I will say, Morning Glory, if you haven't watched that movie... That is so off topic. I know it's off topic, but I just watched it over the weekend. It was really cute and so, inspiring. Okay, so okay. we're talking about Summer Olympics movies. And the first one that we're talking about... Okay, this is, all right, pause, pause. Bring it back to me. <laughs> okay, so turns out summer Olympic movies, when mom and I had this idea, we were like, that's an awesome idea. They're all depressing. They lose, they die. Like, oh, they yeah, lose, no, they that's die. not a happy, happy topic miracle, at all. But apparently, that's that is not the miracle. For my one. goodness, yeah, it's Winter miracle. Olympics. Summer Olympics, okay. there's tons and tons and tons of Winter Olympic movies. Summer, there's about seven of them. Usually, someone's sick, they die, or they lose. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So, all right. So, what are we going to do? I did show? my best in putting these movies together <laughs> for you, okay? Well, I haven't heard of this one that so you're bringing up. I what didn't know it? all of this. Like, I knew that I've known the sports ones that I'm interested in watching for Summer Olympics, but there's a couple that are pretty interesting. <laughs> so, uh, uh -oh. the first movie what are up, they? It's, it's not that okay. bad. So, the first movie up that I'm going to recommend is Stick It. It's a 2006 film that is, you it's know, like from a teen, Bring It On. Yeah, from Bring It On. Whatever. It's I like all about Bring It On. It's all about overcoming adversity and doing things that you Jeff love Bridges. and not apologizing for it. It's a good Jeff movie. Jeff Bridges is in that I actually movie. watched it when I did um, a little internship things, like part-time job in college with middle school kids, and we watched that movie, and I was, like, crying at it. <laughs> and everyone was <laughs> making fun of me. <laughs> that Next sounds one. like you. Okay, oh. this is oh, a little bit more of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Girls just want to have fun. It's got gymnastics in it. Next one. <laughs> Watch it anyways. It's cute. American Flyers. Okay, I don't know why I we remember, started watching so this. So this is all about cycling, and cycling is an Olympic sport. Kevin Costner is in Maybe it, and I remember he has a bloody nose in it. And that's all I can remember oh, wow. in it. And that's I think one that was depressing, too. No, it's it's a good movie, though. It's I like it. I remember, like, he wins or he goes, he finishes it or well, something like that. At the we end, We should all yeah. watch it, though. Okay, Next watch one. it. Okay. Again, all right, I'm sorry. What does this have to do with the Olympics? All right, all of these movies, it's important here for you to listen. <laughs> They're all about motivating you, inspiring you, making you feel better. Morning Glory when, was um, off topic, but... Morning Glory, or no, um, Failure to Launch, this movie. Did you know mountain biking is an Olympic sport? And guess who mountain bikes in this movie? Matthew McConaughey. So, okay. I mean, come on. <laughs> that is very close to the Olympics. Uh, Next one. Very big it's stretch, fun. but it's, it's happy. Good. Oh, yeah. and all of them own their own businesses. That's why they go mountain biking in the middle of the day. How more home office lifestyle can you get? All right, I'm sorry, but what's the top gun? Volleyball. Oh. <laughs> Next one. 
<laughs> Space <laughs> Jam. <laughs> because Michael Jordan no. was in the Olympics. Well, basketball. And it's inspiring because he, ret- <laughs> he retired oh, and he came I back. And it's all about doing what you love. Wait, he and came back from Toontown? No, he retired. And then Looney Tunes went and had to go get him out of retirement to like, save their world, right? <laughs> I think we watched it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the next best one. list ever. I didn't tell mom yet. Okay, so next one. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. Um, against oh. the Ropes. I have never I, watched this movie, so don't take I my did. word for it. I did because I was a, a manager of a rock, a rock band, and she was a manager of a fighter. It's all about being tough <laughs> and a female and Actually, boxing, it. which is an Olympic sport. Next Not one. really. This is oh, kind of a staple. I couldn't put any, you know, like no, this an is Olympic a good list together of summer sports without Rocky in it. So yes. next one. R- Rocky is good. Yeah, d- I shouldn't have to explain that. Yeah. Next one. Okay. Wimbledon. See, these are serious ones. Actually, They're not so this funny. Is cute. This one is yeah. about um he's getting older and she's young and hot and like, you know, doing <laughs> hot stuff. I don't mean like attractive hot. I mean like she's the hot tennis person to beat. And so he's all about like passing down the, mm, like the tennis racket yes, to this, her. And that's they're also fun. like dating it's a good movie. Okay, next one. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, okay. Okay, now so what's it? the horses? Horse jumping is an Olympic sport. Now, this is not necessarily Olympic horse jumping, but they <laughs> jump off yep. of decks into water. <laughs> and and In it's all about it's all about overcoming odds and yes, she, she's blind. she turns she becomes blind yeah. and she I mean she takes risks. It's, I did it's see a that. good film. That, very that I have to exciting. say it's probably my favorite part Next of one. this whole thing. This is going really <laughs> slow. <laughs> because he's Okay, so Million Dollar Mermaid, not exactly about the sport, but they do uh they do um okay. swimming. Esther Williams, uh, one of no, the best swimmers called? in the movies. What's that called when they Synchronized. Synchronized swimming. Which is an which Olympic is sport still. Okay. Next time. Good. Um, okay, so this is just like I think I'm wrapping it up with this one. I can't remember if I have a couple more. So uh <laughs> thirty rocks. Believe in the Stars episode. It's in season three. It's episode two. You should all watch it. And it's really funny because it's about NBC, you know, because the whole thing behind the Olympics is this, this is a big money maker, right? So the networks run all the ads and they have everyone watching in the middle of the day on a Sunday and I'll stuff watch like it. that. So 30 Rock says that uh, NBC fakes a couple sports like tetherball and a couple <laughs> other ones so that the U.S. will win so people will feel more patriotic and better about themselves. And so then the tetherball guy comes in and says, I'm going to tell everyone that it was fake. And then um, Jack Donaghy says, who's the boss in it? Um, who's played by that guy? Uh, Alec Baldwin. And he comes in and says, uh, I'll give you Knight Rider if you don't. And it's just a good episode to watch. And it has Oprah in it. So, and it's it's good. It gives you a lot of, like, morals and um, teaches oh. lots of life lessons in it. Okay. So, anyway, those were my lists. And I'll make sure that I list them out on Ovalai.tv. Oh, my favorite so list you of want, all. So, if you want That's to rent good. them, you'll have them. Maybe I'll make a PDF of it, <laughs> please, too. And please. I'll decorate it for you. <laughs> good one. That's We're really serious here at Ovali. <laughs> that was the best part of the okay, show so anyway. ever. Okay. So you were just watching right. the Olympic episode of Home Office Lifestyle, episode number... 85. And we talked about mom's seven pillars of being Olympic in your home-based business. I hope everybody uh, watches the Olympics, or at least pieces of it if you can, be, especially your home office. Uh, try and watch them in the background because it's inspiring. We talked about um, books by athletes. We talked about a little secret tip. And we talked about movies that you should watch to be motivated and inspired in your home based business lifestyle. Yeah. So make sure that you go to overlay.tv to grab all the links. Check us out on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern here at overlay.tv slash live and get in on the chat. Find us on iTunes, subscribe, and pull in the feed so you can keep up to date with all of our episodes. And thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next Monday. It's Kathy and Jim.